This is Assessment 1, Choice, Literature and Literacy by Fiona Johnson and the book that I have chosen is First They Killed My Father by Lung Ong. The Importance of Literature Johnston in 2012 said that literature is a kind of virtual reality. It is literacy given form and artistic shape through language and languages. And I would like to add to that by saying that literature is a vessel via which we can retell our story. Certainly the book I have chosen to speak about today is a great example of an author retelling the reality of her childhood. But first let's look at why literature is important. Literature is both a window and a mirror to oneself. Reading literature can help to develop a positive self-image and self-confidence. It can aid in brain development and also helps to strengthen our memory as we're always having to remember characters, plots, etc. It provides knowledge and insight into other people's lives and situations and knowledge about the world around us. This is definitely the case with the book that I have chosen. Literature gives meaning to and influences how we view ourselves and the experiences that we endure. It also helps the reader to connect to the author and the characters more deeply and helps children and adults comprehend their life and their world. It promotes tolerance of others and can also spark curiosity and answer questions. <clears throat> that was from Sawyer 2012. Relevance of my chosen book. The reasons of importance listed in the previous slide are relevant to this book, First They Killed My Father. Firstly, because Ung's story prompts the reader to imagine themselves in her situation and wonder how they would handle the treatment she and her family received if it were to happen to them. Literature like Ung's story teaches us about history, the rights and the wrongs, and the human experience that is the result of social economic, political or environmental factors. In this case, the result of the Khmer Rouge army regime. It promotes empathy towards Cambodian culture and diversity of the group in the book. Sawyer in 2012 said that children and adults often need time to reflect on their experiences. Allowing time to think about the content can result in a deeper learning or understanding. And this statement is illustrative of reading Ung's book because the reader is able to stop and absorb what they have just read to develop their own understanding of the feelings and emotions portrayed and to form their own ideas and opinions of what they are reading. As you will read in my overview, Ung was not schooled until around the age of 12, yet through the power of education in America, she was able to catch up and go on to tell her amazing story to thousands of people. This book is true testament to why literacy is so important. What a tragedy it would have been for us if she never got, to, got the opportunity to learn to read and write. We would never have heard her incredible story. Overview. This is the story of the author Lung Ung, the five-year-old daughter of a high-ranking government official in Cambodia in 1975. When Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge army stormed Phnom Penh, Lung's family are forced to flee the city. The story details the lives of, of Lung, her parents and her six siblings as they get separated and put into different work camps. Lung is trained as a child soldier and endures unthinkable tragedy over the following five years. Written in present tense, this harrowing recount of Lung's childhood details the genocide of two million Cambodian people almost one-fourth of the population at the time. <clears throat> I purchased this book on the streets of Siem Reap in Cambodia last year from a man who had had both his legs blown off by a landmine, an aftershock of the war in Cambodia still affecting people today. <clears throat> because the author is from the cultural group she is writing about, this is an authentic recount of her story and culture. Woodson, in 1998, asserted that 
those who are a member of a community need to speak for themselves and that subject position really is everything. This book certainly proves that point. The author is retelling her own story about her childhood in her own country. It would be difficult to tell a story or, or a story about this time in history if you had not experienced yourself. Analysis. The title of this book, First They Killed My Father, gives a prelude to the theme of tragedy, a harrowing human experience. This book tells of the terrible treatment the family have suffered at the hands of the Khmer Rouge and in turn explores the cruel cruelty that humans can inflict on others if they have a motive such as that of Pol Pot and his army. It is communicated through Ung's story and the main idea is to reveal the tragedy that befell all of Cambodia during these years. The narrative. This is an autobiography written in first person in the present tense through the eyes of the main character and the book is written in an informal tone. Structure. This book is divided into 27 chapters plus an epilogue. The chapters provide a detailed timeline of Ung's childhood between 1979 and 1980 when she and her brother escaped to a refugee camp in Thailand. The epilogue cre creates the ending of the story, outlining what Ung is doing now. This is vital as it outlines how Ung has turned her life around and is now using her own literacy to tell her story and help thousands of people around the world. Visuals. The author has also included visuals at the beginning of the book, such as a diagram of a family tree and a map of Cambodia and Vietnam to again, <clears throat> again provide readers not familiar with these countries, a visual identity for the places mentioned in the story. Halfway through the book, there is also eight pages of family photos, mostly taken before the Khmer Rouge took over. These visuals are instrumental in helping the reader to fully understand the ages and appearance of the characters and to empathise with them as people just like us. The first few photos also highlight their privileged background and the link with the military on the opposing side to the Khmer Rouge, which illustrates Ung's family were targets for the Khmer Rouge. Factors that impact on the literacy of the group in the book. Ung's parents and older siblings were educated. However, because she was only five years old when they had to flee Phnom Penh, Ung did not go to school or learn anything related to literacy and numeracy until she was adopted by American foster parents at the age of 11. The Khmer Rouge banned any form of learning except farming and fighting skills. They were taught to work the fields to grow rice and vegetables, to be slaves for the leaders and to fight like soldiers from the age of eight. Intelligence was frowned upon and many people who wore glasses were killed simply because the Khmer Rouge thought that glasses were a sign of an educated person. There was no room for educated people in Pol Pot's regime. Ung says in her book, Pa says the Ankar has abolished markets, schools and university and has banned money, watches, clocks, 8-track players and televisions. During these years there was no learning of anything unless it was related to fighting or farming and this was done in a practical manner. In a journal article in 2004, Sharon May explains how 80 to 90% of all books and manuscripts were destroyed, lost or scattered. During the Khmer Rouge period, the National Library, gra Library grounds were used to raise pigs and Buddhist monasteries, the traditional repositories of literature, were ransacked or converted to prisons. This prohibition undoubtedly had an immense impact on the nation's literacy levels in children involved in this war, and many of them, if they survived, would have never gotten the chance later in life to learn to read and write due to the po poverty that they were now left in.
Thank you.